Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah the merciful the compassionate all praises to Allah the creator of the universes and their sustainer the provider of believers and unbelievers and may his choicest blessings be on the seal of his prophets the last of his messengers and his holy progeny <coughs> we have now come to the second stanza of duai kumail in which amir al mu'minin alayhi salam deals with sins but as we saw at the conclusion of the last sitting these sins that uh, he is discussing now and the consequences are the immediate consequences of the sins that is consequences that flow in this world the consequences that await us on the day of judgment are still to come those he deals with later in the in the dua and inshallah we shall have occasion to discuss them too for the moment he 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 starts in this stanza with the dua allahumma fr li dhunuba allati tahtiku al-'isan o allah forgive me by those sins that that interfere with that erode my protective instruments that you have placed in me tahtiku al-'isan my 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 protective the 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 word in the in the my my safeguards my protective safeguards that you have kept inside me <coughs> well and we touched on this last time that this means that each one of us has isma the 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 peak of isma is of course with those who are sinless who are who are who are totally faultless the 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 prophets and the messengers may peace of allah be on them and the imams alayhi wasalam they are all masumin <coughs> the surah ahzab in verse 33 allah explains this clearly he says inna ma yuridu allah li yudhhiba ankum ar-rizq ahlu al-bayt wa yutahhirakum tatahira in other words it is for that group the ahlul bayt alayhim wasalam for which allah says he has kept them free from from the all, all sins from all from all faults li yudhhiba ankum ar-rizq from any unpleasantness any any wrong at all wa yutahhirakum tatahira and have purified you as you deserve to be purified indeed that is the level that they attained and and hence allah taala gave them that honor we the 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 underlings are not at that level of course because we sin at every step of our lives but at but even at that lower level we have isma of our small levels these are are, are explained in the commentaries as we saw last time as protective layers which protect us against sin if we allow the sin to 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 penetrate those protective um, safeguards well then we are ourselves refusing to use them and if we refuse to use them they corrode and when they corrode we find that that the devil is able to attack us ad lib as he pleases and as he keeps attacking us he is able then to make us commit sin after sin and the more, more sins we commit the more corrosion of those protective fences that allah glorified and exalted has kept in our in our in our, in our, in our heart to to protect us from the from shaitan indeed allah taala in his holy book says ma asabakum min musibatin fa bima kasabat aydikum wa ya'fu an al-kathir there is no there is no uh, affliction that comes to you except that you have earned it with your own hands and we have forgiven you pardoned you many sins we have pardoned you a great deal anyway wa ya'fu an kathir we have forgiven you a, a, a great deal so allah ta'ala says that ma asabakum min musibatin whatever whatever affliction reaches you has been earned 
by your own hands. So we only have ourselves to, to blame for it. He has even kept safeguards. And if we do not use those safeguards, allow them to, to be ignored, to be, to be abused by, by shaitan and allow him to do so, then we only have ourselves to blame. Yet Allah glorified and exalted says. And we will have occasion to see how merciful he is. And yet out of his mercy he says, I forgive a great many of your sins. Well, let us look at what these sins are then that are referred to in this particular um, first opening sentence of the second stanza. He says, he, he says in it, Allahumma ghfir li adhunub allati tahatiku al-isam, forgive me those sins which tear away my protective layers that you have kept in me. Well, what are these sins? He does not define them in the dua, otherwise, of course, the dua would be so extensive. But Imma alayhim salam after him have taken occasion to clarify these for us and give us a commentary on what these sins are. Indeed, the, 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 the leading work of Sheikh Sadduq alayhi rahma on this point in Ma'ani al-Akhbar sets out, sets out five sins that are, that are meant to be included in this first sub-paragraph of the second paragraph that we are dealing with. Those that tear away our protective layers. Now, these must be the most important ones because so long as the protective layers are there, we have hoped that we will be able to confront shaitan and, 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 and resist his temptations. But once those get eroded, corroded and ultimately eroded, well, then our, our chances of, of protecting ourselves against him are, are reduced. Then we have to resort to Tawbah. The, the answer to that is Tawbah that again reinforces our, our um, protective fences. Well, so in that, in that, in that work, Sheikh Saduq alayhi rahma says, there are five sins that are included in this paragraph. Now, these must be the very important ones because, because they are sins that erode our protective, protective weapons. If, we have, if our defensive weapons are destroyed, and this is why, as you know, in any battle, the enemy first tries to, to, to attack our weapons so that then he can attack us uh, freely. And this is what shaitan does. The protective layers that we have is what he is trying to, to erode. <coughs> Hence of paramount importance that we keep away from these five sins. And as you can expect, the first of these five is, uh, is a drinking of intoxicants. Because drinking of intoxicants has the effect of leading you to commit other sins. And this is what the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his progeny in one of his ahadiths explains. He says, if you commit a sin, like, for example, God forbid, stealing. You have stolen, you've committed that sin. It does not necessarily lead you to committing other sins. But if you become intoxicated, then you lose control over yourself. And then from, from intox uh, imbibing intoxicating liquor and losing control over yourself, you can lead, you can lead yourself into adultery. That, that state can lead you into the sin of adultery and from adultery you can even go further and commit murder. So all those, in fact there is a hadith which I do not want to take you into in, 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 in which it is set out how Allah glorified and ex exalted explains that to the angels. The Holy Prophet peace be upon him and his progeny in his words explained it in the manner in which I have sought to set out to you. You, you can imbibe intoxicating liquor and commit the first sin and from there you meet a lady and you commit you can commit adultery uh, because you are now not in self-control and from there things can develop and you can even commit murder so those three heinous offenses can be committed one after the other and hence the first offense that is that is uh, set out as breaking corroding our, our um, protective layers is intoxicating liquor. 
And this is why uh, it is a major sin. Indeed, there is another hadith in, of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, in which he says, I will make shafa'ah, I will intercede for my ummah on the day of judgment, but I will not intercede firstly for shirk. If anybody has committed the offense of uh, associating Allah glorified and exalted with another entity, then that is a sin that I will not intercede for, because that is a sin which Allah glorified and exalted says he will not forgive. He is tawwab, he is ghafoorur rahim but he will not forgive shirk. And he has made this very clear in the Holy, in the Holy Quran. Well, so the Holy Prophet says he will not intercede for shirk because it will be a contradiction. But he says the next thing he will not intercede for is, is for people who consume intoxicating liquors. And hence it is of paramount importance that we restrain ourselves and may Allah help us in this regard from intoxicating liquors. Well, there is this theory that goes on these days. Oh, but you can drink so much only until you 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 become uh, you you start losing control over yourself. Now, those are those are the ways in which the devil helps us to start forming habit of drinking, and then we lay op we lay ourselves open to his machinations. It is najis, and it must not be touched. Except, of course, if it is uh, industrial liquor which falls under a different category altogether, we are only discussing uh, intoxicating liquors that are imbibed, that are, that are consumed. Well, but the, the paragraph we are dealing with, as we have already seen, deals with the immediate consequences. And we will see this all along. All the six items in this uh, paragraph deal with the immediate consequences of those sins. Like this one, tahtikul ism, that interfere with my isma, with my protective guards. These, these are in the world. The, the, that, that interference is in, 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 this, in, in this world. So it is the immediate consequences that you commit those sins and your uh, protective elements get eroded. So intoxicating liquor first because it leads to other offenses willy-nilly. We are then not able to control ourselves because we have already lost uh, mental control by the effect of the intoxicating liquor. And then we lead ourselves from one offense to another. That is immediate offense. But we can come home and, 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 and uh, uh, inflict hardship on our, on our family quite wrongfully. They may have done no wrong, but you are not in your senses. And we see umpteen examples of this happening. So the first sin that has been outlined as a sin that, uh, that erodes our protective layers is imbibing intoxicating liquor. So that is the first offense from which we have to refrain ourselves totally. The second offense, the second sin that has been, and indeed, indeed, that's, that sin is included in this paragraph as the one that brings immediate consequences in this world. Not only of other offenses that are committed, but oneself, you lose, you can control, lose control over yourself. You may not be able even to reach home. You lose self-respect in this world. You lose the honor and, and dignity of a human being. So all these worldly consequences flow immediately. Punishment of the day of judgment for which there is no shafar, as we have just noticed, is still awaiting us. Therefore, the first offense that has been set out as, as, as interfering with our protective layers is intoxicating, consuming of intoxicating liquors. The second offense, the second sin that is set out is gambling. Well, we know how much immediate effect gambling can have. It can ruin a wealthy man. He can lose, and, and, and in that loss, he can, he can uh, erode his entire capital, his entire uh, assets. Well, so it is of paramount importance that we keep away from it. It is, and once you gamble, the temptation to gamble again, oh, I lost today, I've got to go tomorrow and make up for it, but you lose more. 
and if you if you do make you if you do make some money you you have made money to lose it again because even making that money leads you into the temptation of thinking that you should play more and more in the hope that you will earn and, and, and make profit as you did on the previous occasion. But that may not come true and it can lead to, to, to ruination. But you can see that is worldly ruination that we are talking about. The Arab of the Day of Judgment still, still awaits us. And who has made money out of gambling? Who has, who has benefited out of gambling? It is, it, the word gambling itself shows uncertainty unsureness. Allah provides risk. He gives, un, 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 uh, he gives countless uh, risk, countless sustenance and, 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 and wealth to whomsoever he pleases. He is the one to besiege. He is the one for whom to seek that wealth and he grants it and grants it, grants it بِغَيْرِ hisab countless that we cannot even imagine from where this money came. And there are umpteen examples of this in, 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 our, in our books and in our experiences. And we all have seen that happen. We have all seen how gambling can make a wealthy man penniless the next morning because he has lost all his estate in, in gambling. So that is the second, second sin that is set out as a sin which erodes our protective layers. The third sin is indulging in plays which cause mockery or derision amongst people. Now that is very serious. To have plays, to have or, or, or a gathering in which people meet. And this and this we have seen repeatedly in our societies. People the educated in particular will meet and, 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 and deride rules of religion. What is, what is this not drinking liquor? Don't we have control ourselves, over ourselves? These criticisms, deriding rules of religion, deriding people who follow religion, and, 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 and making a mockery of them, or having plays in which, in which religious leaders are mocked, in which, in which pious people are, are, are disdained, um, which cause mockery of, 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 of religion. Well, well, all this has an evil influence on society and, 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 and uh, the consequence is, is, is immediate. It, it, uh, one, one loses respect in society as being one of those who indulges in such, in such wasteful activities. Wasteful because they do not bring any benefit to, to society or to, to oneself and the, and the consequence is that it creates ill feelings, it creates, it creates fitna, it creates um, uh, disagreements in society and, and one group starts looking down upon the other. The way to, to, to discuss religious uh, doctrines is in serious sittings in serious sittings with people who know religion so that there can be a discussion at par, discussions in which the, the point of view that is put forward by, by, by religion, what Quran says on the point, what are the ahadis on the point, can only be discussed, can, can all be discussed. Um, but casual derision of, of, uh, of uh, religious principles can lead to serious consequences and, and indeed and indeed m causing mockery or derision amongst people is, is dangerous because it, it destabilizes society. It, it, it has a consequence of creating frictions in society and, 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 and um, creating groups which, are, which disdain on the unity of society, on the, on the strength of the society. And so it is grouped as one of those that bring down, that, 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 sorry, that erode our protective elements. The fourth offense, the fourth sin that has been set out is gossiping. Gossiping about other people's vices or infamies. Well, Riba in particular, 
talking ill of others. Now that has uh, that has that has a um, uh, a very corrosive consequence on society. To start with, when you are doing that, talking talking ill of other people. The exact words are gossiping about other people. In other words, talking about them in their in their absence. It does no good because the person is not there. If you are wrong, if you are lying, he is not there to say that you are lying. And why are you so scared? Why are you so 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 such a coward as to speak his ill again behind his back? Why don't you confront him and speak and, and speak to him about it? Because that can become Amr bil Maruf. He can tell you that what you are saying is wrong that he did not indulge in those activities, in which case his respect in your eyes increases and he also respects you, that you took the trouble of, of going to correct him and putting on the, on him on the, on the straight path. Love can increase in that process. So you can see that in doing good, good flows from it. But in doing evil by sitting and talking behind him, behind his back, only brings about more evil. Because if he comes to know, then he thinks ill of you, that you, that you, are, you are making false allegations against him. And false allegations, tahma, is another very serious offense. So, gossiping, of course, even if it is true and you speak behind his back, you are committing an offense. But it is manifest that that kind of behavior only erodes social, social fabric. It only creates ill feelings amongst people. It does not help in any way at all. It does not help the person who is uh, indulging in it. It does not help the person about whom the, the, the subject is discussed. So both do not benefit. Indeed, both, both can, be, can, be, can be insulted. Both can, can. But as I said, these offenses that are mentioned in this particular paragraph are offenses that have that, that carry immediate worldly consequences. Now, if a person makes false allegations behind the back of another, then, then when that other comes to know of it and, and, and exposes the one who made the false allegation, you can see the immediate social consequence. People begin to distrust you, begin to think that you will make statements that are irresponsible, that may be totally untrue, that when faced by, by the person concerned, you can be completely demolished and, 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 and contradicted. Usually we hear them saying, oh, but I did not say it. And then there are other people who, who, who have, have heard him say that. If he says, I did not say it, then he makes himself a liar in society also. So the consequences in this world are, are so serious for, for, uh, be, for that kind of behavior. And yet the accounting on the Day of Judgment it remains because it is it is a, it is an allegation made against another person. Hakun Nas is involved, and Allah glorified and exalted will not forgive Hakun Nas until the person who has been who has been uh, affronted, a person the person to whom and the injustice is done, also forgives you. So you have to look for that person also and get his 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 forgiveness. Uh, a lengthy process. Allah uh, um, Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam therefore sets out in the very opening of that, of that uh, uh, sentence, that, that Allah should forgive us these sins that, that encroach upon our protective layers. Now, that is the more serious part that I just touched on. Once they encroach on the protective layers, we have no protection. And when we do not have that protection, well, shaitan can, can, uh, can deride us. He can, he can walk all over us and lead us from sin to sin. May Allah give us the strength to protect ourselves from these sins and may He keep us on the straight path. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.